gratuitous silver shot. This here is Tiffany Silver, stamped in the back Tiffany. I got for much less than spot price two years ago before at estate sales the silver was well known. And of course the blade is not silver. Silver makes a very poor blade, it's too soft and whatnot. But it also has inscription to Leslie Martin, June 20, 1937. And I saved this from the refinery because there's there's a silver scrap at, at this estate sale. I got to this stuff first because he would have scrapped it down. And the people at this estate sale say that it's a shame. All this really nice silverware, even Tiffany, they melt the stuff down for melt value. So when you're buying silver stuff and someone tries to convince you it's got some kind of numismatic value, unless you are an expert in numismatic, co numismatic coins, what's going to happen, it's all going to go for melt value in the future, including stuff like Tiffany silver. What a shame if this got, stuff got melted down. Anyhow, the point in this video is if you make extraordinary claims, you need airtight evidence and ample proof to back up your claims. This goes back to the human experience. For, for most of the human experience, thousands and thousands of years, many thousands of years, it was dangerous to experiment and it was very dangerous when someone came forth with a new idea because it could kill you. For example, someone shows up and they have, look at this new berries I found. They they're very nutritious and healthy. Try them. You're going to say, no way. How about this? You eat the berries first. We'll wait a few days and then we'll trust you because you could die from, from this kind of um, proof, th th these things that are not proved. Or, you, you know, you're, you're, you're walking on, on, on the road and someone says, hey, let's take a shortcut through the, through the, the dark, scary swamp. You're like, well, geez, this is the wilderness. You know, we're, we don't have electricity. We, we don't even have, this is before gunpowder. You could die in the woods, you get lost, and you're not going on a path. So you, would, you need extraordinary evidence because otherwise humans, you, you would die throughout history. I mean, someone says, hey, let's let, you see, you see a little bear cub. Hey, you know what? Bear cubs make great pets. You're like, no, the mob bears around somewhere and they tear you apart. So you got to understand how the, the whole thing, the, the whole taboo around a lot of these, th th these unusual things um, spring up. And there's usually a lot of mocking involved as a, as a taboo structure to discourage people from creating these potentially dangerous ideas. Now what happens is that that just means the person creating the idea has to have very airtight proof. You have to prove without a doubt that those berries are not going to kill you. Because in the past, people have died from eating poison berries. So we're getting now to, to YouTube. On YouTube, there's a lot of hoaxes. For myself, I have uncovered many hoaxes on YouTube. Same with a lot of viewers. So when someone says something on YouTube, that doesn't mean that it's right. Even if you know the person and you like them, they, if they have an extraordinary claim, that does not make it right. However, if they can present airtight evidence, I can be swayed. Now, this gets to a meme about how to win scratch-off lottery tickets, right? When, when Bar None first did a video, I asked if it was a satire. I was not saying that to make fun of him, and I was not saying to discount him. I want to know, is, it, is your opinion satire? And... Apparently, he, he does believe this, and about a dozen channels picked up on this. For example, Silver Guitar, Silver Junkie, Cerebral Carnival, and a guest he had, they all bought lottery tickets and, and tried his system. It was like entertainment. Because, you know, it, 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 what he said is kind of fascinating, right? I'm not saying I believe it or, or, or don't believe it, but it's kind of fascinating. And, of course, there are some, some channels like, you know, the Velvet Cult News Unit, Several others that are kind of mocking him. Well, because he didn't have airtight proof, and they're doing that whole are the berries poisonous thing going back to the, the human condition. And then even like um, Randy Tooth chimed in. You know, he he was saying saying like a more a more pro bar none thing, right? So it's and, and a few other channels discussed this, right? So it's like he started a meme, and that's kind of interesting. And I'm kind of I, I kind of waited to see it, how how the meme would grow, and basically. It's turned to, to kind of great entertainment value. Now, that doesn't mean I'm being negative on bar none. I'm just saying it's an interesting thing. However, part of the reason why I think he's getting mocked is because he didn't have a very... Um, his description didn't refer to anything. For example, there's something called the Gans-Feld Experiment. 
I think that what Barnum was what was referring to in his his, his, his uh, he says he has an ability to to you know, he, he goes into a Seven Eleven, and if he's confident and there's a winning ticket, he, sometimes he'll be able to pick that winning ticket. This kind of um, reflects on the Gansfeld experiment, which involves kind of like you know sensory de sensory deprivation, where you have the subject have like headphones with static with static noise, like the radio on a channel that doesn't have a channel. You have a red light shining, and you cut ping pong balls in half and put them over the eyes. And a lot of time that causes, you know, you have, have to see things, have visions, like the whole the whole dream state or hallucination activated, whatnot. But anyway, um, I, I, I've seen videos on this in Reddit. Anyways, the proponents say that this actually, you know, after this experiment, the, 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 there should be a one in four chance of picking something. And, but what happens is their chance increases to like about 1 in 32 percent, which is statistically, statistically significant. I mean, one, if 1 in 4 is random, and you can do this experiment and be right about 32 percent of the time, that is something there. That is like the whole kind of like web bot, slightly, slightly psychic human ability thing, right? Now, I'm not saying the web bots are right. Here's my thing about the web bots, right? It's about silver. If enough people watch the web bots, and web bots say silver's going up and they buy silver, that will make the price of silver go up. So that's that's different than than the, the slightly psychic thing. That's the crowd phenomena. But I'm not saying they're wrong though. But what I'm saying is that if like Bar Nunn had had talked about the Gansfeld experiment as as a, as a warm up, talked about how there are sci serious scientists who believe this Gansfeld experiment. There are other serious scientists who say it's bunk and they say the experiment was just wrong. Th th there's all these things, right? That that that's that's a topic of discussion. But the way it came out. It was, it was, it was, inter it was really entertaining, because if you're gonna, if you if you're gonna present something that's extraordinary, and you don't have airtight evidence, you can expect the chop up videos to appear, and you shouldn't be angry because this, this is the human condition. Like when I first made silver videos, I expected to be mocked, because after all, I saw other guys like Peter Schiff was mocked. His Peter Schiff was right video in 2006, seven. He got mocked. He went against the grain, talked about you know real estate market going down, whatnot. And he was right. He got mocked. Peter was a trooper. He never got discouraged. He didn't. He, he didn't. He didn't shut his. He, he didn't stop talking. He kept doing it because he was very confident that he was right, and he knew he would be redeemed. So, if you really believe in something, and people mock you, and you don't have airtight evidence, if you believe what you're saying, you will present airtight evidence, and you will hold back and wait to be redeemed. I'm just saying that's my opinion there. So, yes, interesting stuff in this Gansfield experiment was actually in that movie called. Men who talk to goats or something like that, Men, or whatever, and they kind of made fun of it. But this Gansfield experiment, they refer to it a lot, saying that the, the the scientific community is aware of it, not necessarily that they believe in it, but some people do. And I know a lot of people on YouTube do believe in this. Humans are slightly slightly psychic phenomenon, and I I, I can't really say one way or the other. I'll have an open mind because if, if if you can present me with airtight evidence, I I will consider it. But I will not eat the poison berries. So if you present something that's extraordinary without evidence, I might see it as a hoax or po potentially poisonous berries. So thanks for watching. And my final gratuitous silver shot.